On today's churchtechcast.com question and answer show, just a couple of pro presenter questions. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show. This is the show where every week I answer your questions. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to join the conversation, by the way. So don't hesitate to leave your comment below the video if you're watching the video. If you're not, no problem. Just hit me up on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. That's a good way. My email address is paul at Trinity digitalmedia.com. That works too. So these are a couple of questions that came to me at trinitydigitalmedia.com. So I thought that I would uh, let you in on uh, what they are and answer them as well. Jackie sent me an email that said, hi, We've been using ProPresenter since July 2014, and we're using an iGrabber video capture to take live camera footage into ProPresenter for stage display for our congregation. I think she actually means iMag. Stage display is something a little different in ProPresenter. This worked well for about two months. After that, two things happened. The iGrabber stopped working, so we ordered a new one, and I updated our MacBook Pro Retina to Yosemite. Now the MacBook doesn't seem to recognize the iGrabber and we keep getting a message saying no available digitizer found. Thanks in advance, Jackie. So turns out they got another piece of hardware that solved this problem, but I did want to share the process that I would go through to find out if it's the iGrabber or the Mac. So uh, or ProPresenter, rather. So it, it's actually fairly simple. If you go to youtube.com slash upload, or you go to um, QuickTime and create a new video recording, either way should work fine. You can try and do a recording with this piece of gear. If neither of those can see the eye grabber, You've got some sort of interaction problem with the eye grabber. Could be broken. Could be you got two bad ones in a row. Rare, but it happens. Could be software. Could be that the software doesn't like Yosemite. Could be that the Max USB port is bad. There's a lot of things that it could be, but we need to know does it work in conjunction with the Mac at all? If it doesn't, then it's not ProPresenter's fault because ProPresenter can't see what the Mac can't see. So that's the very first thing that I would do if I were you. Uh, I've got an email out to her to find out what piece of equipment they went with, if it was another eye grabber or something else, because I'm quite frankly kind of interested. Uh, Mike Sessler at... Um, uh, Church Tech Arts used a piece to get in uh, his pastor's iPad into ProPresenter. So then they would have total control of when that shows up and when it doesn't, but the pastor could control what's on, actually on the iPad. So pretty cool thing if you do it like that. So that's uh, an idea. I think actually you could probably... Anyway, something totally different as an aside. I'm always thinking of out-of-the-box ways of using ProPresenter, so we'll talk about that maybe on another uh, churchtechhouse.com screencast show, which releases every Tuesday. Max, via email, said, here's another workflow issue for you. In addition to doing a lot of medleys with our band, we very often will go back to a song sung previously and repeat only part of it. Again, looking to understand the workflow of ProPresenter so that we can do this without having to create 
a document in the library that would only ever be used once. In Easy Worship, once you bring a song into the playlist, it is no longer connected to the library version so that any changes you make in the song in the playlist don't get changed in the master version. So we could simply bring in another instance of the song and then trim it down, say to just the bridge and chorus, just for that set. I've thought of using arrangements, but again, it would be making an arrangement for just one use. Also thought of uh, disabling slides, but this affects the other instances of the song in the playlist too. So would have to be done on the fly. Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I think we've run into a, a difference between Easy Worship and ProPresenter. You're absolutely right that they're always connected in ProPresenter. So what I would do, I think, is I would, I just had another idea on how to do this. So the first way that I would do it is create an arrangement and then when you're done, just delete it. Uh, it's click and then backspace and you're done. Backspace on the Mac, it's delete on the PC. So that would absolutely work as we, found out he'd know this ahead of time so this isn't a oh no we're in the song and I don't know what to do kind of situation this is in fact a uh, something that he knows well ahead of time so that's good the other way that you could do it is you could actually make the change and when you shut down ProPresenter it will ask you if you want to make a change to a song just say no I think that would absolutely work. I don't know why it didn't occur to me before this very instant. So I'm going to have to email you back, Max, and we'll go from there. So if you like this content, don't hesitate to drop me a line, as I said. But probably the easiest way is just to get on my mailing list because that comes from my email address. So uh, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash GIFTS, G-I-F-T-S, and there I will uh, give you a gift of your choice. I think there are five right now that you can choose from, along with the free subscription to my newsletter. So I'd love to see you over there, and once you get your first email from me, just hit reply, and that comes directly to me. I don't have an assistant or anything. So you can get in touch with me directly there, and that's probably the easiest way to do it. So I hope that you'll use this information in your church as you're going out and changing eternity. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.